I finally succumb to all hail the game pass. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's not that overload of like, oh, you got to like, and then you got to kill people at the same time. You're like, no. <laughs> Myself away from Wasteland. Damn you, Wasteland. Gotta, gotta be Wasteland. Hello, Craig. And hello, everybody. Welcome to the Retro Rants Retro Gaming Podcast. It is our 64th episode, and I am Al. I'm Nick. Oh, man. What a two weeks it has been. Holy I mean, moly. It, could this have fallen on a better two weeks for a bi weekly show like ours? I mean, the <laughs> amount of shit that we have to cover is almost illegal. Yeah, and, and there's going to be, you know, probably a little bit more next time. But yeah, it's just like, oh, just a ton landed these past two weeks. And it's been great. It has been great. Like, what a two weeks, man. Um, well, I guess we'll start there. What have you been up to? So uh, I, I finally succumbed to all hail the Game Pass. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> I've finally done it. So... I picked it up and immediately started jumping into you know a lot of the games that you know that were on there. It's like I wanted to play. I jumped into Carry On. Uh, holy crap! Dude, is that, how great is that? Such a fun game. Like I, I, I kind of wish it was a little longer. That was the only thing I was disappointed was, was like I got to the end. I was like, oh no, that's it. <laughs> and, and I think I played it. I think it was around six, maybe eight hours or so ish. Yeah, it wasn't a long game, but oh my god, did I love oh. that! Concept. So fun and yeah, again, like we I, we talk, I think we talked about it, you know, in an episode oh, back. Yeah. Oh yeah, and, I raved, yeah, I raved about it the day, the day or two, the day, day or two after it hit. I yeah. loved that game. Fantastic Metroidvania, but it, it, it kind of with a little a little twist because uh, yeah, I didn't realize you know because like with all the other ones, it's always like you build up more, 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 and suddenly you're like this super super powered, you know, whatever by the end of the game. So you think Metroid is like you're getting all these rockets and you know, health packs and whatnot. By the time you get to the end, you're just, you're just like, you know, you're a walking arsenal. Alucard, uh, you're all decked out, ready yeah. to whoop your father's ass. Exactly. And with this one, <laughs> you, you do have that, but there's also points where like, you have to give up that power to get into certain spaces. So like, you know, I love it. And, and for those who don't know, or maybe tuning in, Karen, you play the monster. So think of like the it, or not the it, but uh, you know it, uh, the thing. The, the, the thing. thing. You know, what do I say? Yeah, 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 the thing. Not it. Not the. Cl- There's no clowns here. <laughs> <laughs> the thing. Well, John that Carpenter. Would be a great concept too. <laughs> right? Yeah, I think that'd be great. Um, John Carpenter's the thing. Body snatchers. Uh, you know you, that that kind of vein of like monster. You get to play the monster. Alien too, because you're going. Alien. Yeah, yeah. 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 Absolutely. Yeah. The elements of it, like you know, great. Basically, all these little sci-fi tropes are kind of like mixed together. But ultimately, you're playing the monster this time. You're not. You're not the hero. You know, or the marine team, or whatever. You're you're the monster breaking out of this this lab. Um, and so as you go along, you're like, you're getting, you know, more, you know, you get bigger and bigger as you consume more humans and whatnot. But there's points where I always, you know, on my stream, I was like, you take a monster poop. <laughs> it's the only <laughs> way I can describe it. And basically yeah, pretty much. You, you're like lobbing a part of your, yourself off in select areas. And basically there's grades. You know, I think this went up to four grades, uh, four grades in, yeah, in terms of strength. Guys. Yeah. And each grade has different. Uh, sub ability. So, like you, you know, yeah. you're, if you're on a controller, like A and B do different different style attacks, and if you're in grade two, they do completely different ones. So you're either having to upgrade or downgrade yourself in in specific areas to do specific things. And I, I thought that was so clever, um, absolutely genius. I, yeah. I couldn't agree more. Yeah. So anyway, so played that. Uh, jumping into Wasteland Three. Oh yeah. my goodness, <laughs> this game is so fun. I mean, seriously, this is this is the Fallout game that we've waited for. So like the the true Fallout Three, I should say, you know, not I would one hundred percent agree. And this isn't to say like the original Fallout Three wasn't bad, like that was fun, but it, it was a change in genre. It went from kind of that isometric look to the FPS uh, look. Yep. Uh, mm-hmm. Whereas this, like like I said, this is this is like the true like spiritual successor of you know Fallout Two, and man, is it so fun! Oh man, I, I feel like and- they, they nail it perfectly. They do, and, and in a kind of like weird, not even irony, but just like a, a wonderful twist of fate. The original Wasteland 
developed by the same guy, Brian Fargo, who I'm now like determined started talking to. I want to get him in for an interview now that like this is a huge hit. I've wanted to talk to him since Bard Tale, Bard's Tale 4. But he created the original Wasteland. And the original Wasteland is cited by the developers, you know, the, as the inspiration for the first Fallout and the mm-hmm. entire Fallout series. Um, it's what inspired that. Wasteland 3, in in my opinion, uh, I'll preface, but like, I, I now have a couple games of the year at this point. Now, this is going without playing Cyberpunk. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, but I will say, I think Wasteland 3 is probably the best RPG to come out, at the very least this year, um, in a very long time, though. It is a masterstroke. It has a, a bug or two here and there, but I haven't really run into any on the PC side. Um, the story's great. I'm still not done with it. The game is fucking massive. Like massive. I, I've talked to people that have put in almost 100 hours on Wasteland 3 and they're like, it didn't feel that long and I think I might have missed a few things. Like, <laughs> And the, what, I, what I really applaud them for, I know we mentioned it in the last cast, is they really, truly um, have embraced divergent choice in that you can by the time you get to the end of it, your Colorado's is probably going to look much different than my Colorado. Oh, I'm sure. Like, and that's kind of what I'm enjoying about this. Like, you know, there's there's no clear. I, I, I say the clear, but there's definitely like tones of good and evil, but there's a but, lot of gray in between that this game provides. And not only that, where I think this game is absolutely genius. Because it goes into what makes a good antagonist. Mm -hmm. Um, And it's that, you know, every villain is the hero of their own story. They think they're doing the right thing. And you will make choices in this game where you're like, yeah, that is 100% the right thing to do. It's what my character would do. And you do it, and there is a horrible fucking outcome that you did (laughs) not predict. Oh, man. And it doesn't feel, it never feels unjustified either. Like, you know, there's there's some clear like, oh, I'm going to go over here and club some baby seals. I'm not going to do that. But then there's also like, I'm not going to club the baby seals, uh, but, you know, I want to, I want to help the seals. And then it's like, everyone hates you for it because suddenly you're using all your food to help the seals. Now the sitting in the swimming pool and now everybody's got E. coli and it's all your fault. Exactly. Exactly. Like there's (laughs) there's other repercussions. Like, okay, it doesn't feel, you know, it doesn't feel bullshitty. Like, because I know there, I feel like there's some games and I can't think of one right now but i know i've played other rpgs where it's like oh, okay let me do this and it's like oh ho ho here's the genie in the bottle you know just like twisting your words and now now yep. you're 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 done it's like no uh like it actually feels like okay that makes sense like that it, makes sense it's yeah. like, you know, there's always like oh that sucks i didn't think of that but it's like that makes sense and i'll, I'll roll with it and i'll roll with it and and what makes this game genius is it's not like it's not like Mass Effect, where there was like basically two or three di- paths total. Oh yeah, and, and it, it, well, clearly, you know, then you also you got far enough as like this is the Paragon choice, this is the you know, the Renegade right. choice. Right. This it's not even close to that. It's there is easily hundreds, I would say, of different combinations of choices and outcomes that by the end of it, like I said, your story is going to play out very differently than somebody else's. Um, and I, uh, that, uh, from a former software developer and, and somebody that has even tried to write, like, even choose your own, like, novel stories kind of deal, like, like visual novel games. Good luck. <laughs> it's really yeah. fucking hard to yeah. do. And That's a lot they of choices. embraced it. They embraced mm-hmm. it. They rolled with it. They did it right. Brian Fargo, In Exile Entertainment, all of y'all, like, I cannot sing your praises enough. I would put Wasteland 2 in my top three games. Wasteland 3, sorry, in my top three games of the year this year. Without a, without a hesitation of a beat. Mm-hmm. I believe it. Yeah, like, like hands down. Like, story-wise, it's like smack on. Now, I will, I will yeah, comment absolutely. that on if you try to do with this multiplayer, now, which I thought was fantastic, because, I mean, you never think about any of these games having a multiplayer component to it. No, no, um, no. But it's actually a whole lot of fun. You, you know, it's like basically you control half the team and then your your multiplayer buddy can control the other half of the team. Um, so it actually allows for you to like kind of like, you know, talk back and forth and like, OK, I'm going to take my shot here and you run your guy up there or whatever. Um, 
But I will say on a technical level, multiplayer really starts to fall, get, get, fall off the rails. Technically, uh, uh, there, you know, there's some I, there's not save issues, but like loading issues. There's problems with the dialogue not popping up. Um, so I, I, in, you know, I'm, this is more like if people are looking to do the multiplayer, like just be prepared that you're going to have a rough road trying to do the multiplayer. I say, I say it's still worth it, but just be prepared okay, for a say, lot we of give it a month. Like, does it sounds yeah. like Ryan and company have a, a lot of patches planned. Should we give it a month or is it worth trying now? I, w- I would say because they've already released some patches and actually did improve some of the things like they had some very bad loading issues initially and the patch fixed mm-hmm. that uh, they're working on like the audio stuff. So I think, yeah, in probably a month, I feel like they're going to get those ironed out and then that it'll be, it'll be pitch perfect across the board on a solo experience. Yeah, no, I haven't run any, any, any major oh. issues and it's been playing fine on a technical level. And obviously, like we said, on the story level, like absolutely outstanding. So, oh, you know, so good. at the very least do that. If, if you're interested in the multiplayer, just be prepared for be a little rough around the edges, but still, still a lot of fun. And the story is great and can we can we take a moment because you and i are whores for this kind of thing <laughs> can we give the music a fucking oh, oh up? man i did not right. expect that like like God. like the initial music is like okay th- this is putting me in the mood but when i go into like certain sections like uh like early on you go into what's called little vegas and all of a sudden like you know this this like 80s like dance music and i'm like oh this, oh, this, is, this is pretty good i like it <laughs> and, yeah and just like kind of this almost johnny cash you know um of all, all these other various songs and whatnot and you've heard them before and one one stood out to me uh was What's the darcy one right i've been bathed in the blood yeah the yeah there's that yeah there's like the more prominent ones when, when you're going to certain battles but one that caught me off guard was a, a green acres version and, yes! it, and it only pops up in in the world. And I was driving around, I was like, and then all of a sudden, like, Green Acres is the place. And I'm like, is that Green Acres? Because, <laughs> like, totally, it's like you know, it's like you, you think about it. It's like I don't know when it came out. Was it the '60s or something when when the TV show aired or whatever? Yeah, easily. But, it, but it's like this super you know '60s chipper you know happy tune for those who, who've never you know I'm, I say update myself but it's, I've seen it in reruns you know yeah as a kid in the we 80s. saw it in reruns we old but yeah we, we yeah we ain't that old but still like we saw it in reruns like I don't think uh, I feel like anyone is the place yeah it's very this very chipper and there is like this very downtrodden like wow that is really weird <laughs> I'm digging it but I, it was like whoa and yeah just like really great you know soundtrack throughout absolutely and it's just at the perfect times like oh, it's yeah. not all the time it's really not like it's, it's not overbearing yeah certain combat certain scenes and what i think is so genius about it is when you understand as you play through it you'll find like logs and security tapes and and transcripts where like shit basically went completely tits up around the end of the 90s and, yeah. you know, big nuclear war and all that. So what are these people looking back on? They're looking back on the 80s and the times before it as, like, this iconic golden era that they'll never have back. So, like, you have Little Vegas, which is this, um, it's like a casino. It's like a ret- like a throwback casino where like, you go in there and gamble. You can get fucked up and get, you know, high and all that. But it's it's meant to be a throwback to the Vegas that's no longer there because it was destroyed in, in wasteland too, which by the way, Nick, if you haven't played, it's good. I, I'd say it's not on the same tier as this one, because again, you're comparing a masterpiece to a great game, but sure. wasteland two is still a great game. Um, and you'll understand the whole thing about like coaches as they talk about that uh, a few times and Angela death uh, is a character in that, but it's just one of those, like, it fits so perfectly. Like you'll hear these remixed eighties songs or sixties songs. And you're just like, God damn. And like, (laughs) I just, I made myself laugh the other day. Like my kids were just being exceptionally bad. And, uh, (laughs) And like I had finally gotten them to bed, and the baby started crying. And I'm just like, I've been bathed in the blood <laughs> of the lamb. And my wife's like, You all right? I'm like, No, no. <laughs> but I have to say, the characters are amazing. The story is amazing. Wasteland three. Like, if you're on the fence about this, like, 
uh, again, Game Pass Ultimate yeah, Game Pass. Yeah, well. like if you have Game Pass, no excuse. Like get it now. Download get it now. It, start it's playing on Game Pass. Download it. Stop what you're doing. Oh, and then there's something else on PC Game Pass. <laughs> and now you'll figure out what the hell took me off Wasteland Three that I love. <laughs> indeed, indeed. You you want to talk about that, or you want, you want me to finish up my list here? No, please finish up your list first. Right. Take a little drink here. Uh, so. Uh, uh, also on Epic Game Store, I think this past week, I don't know if it's still for free, but uh, Into the Breach uh, was one of the free games they had. Um, fantastic game made by the Heart. devs. Oh, yeah. Uh, it made by the devs who made FTL faster than light. So if you love roguelike games, pick this up. I was having a blast with this. Uh, it's that similar rogue type concept, but you know, completely new. It's in grid format, so more like these little mini chess games. Um, having a blast with that. Um, again, definitely worth the pickup for free if you can sure. if it's still there. If not, I think it's usually running like I don't know, five, ten bucks or something, like on Steam or whatever. So it's still definitely worth the pickup, especially again if you're into the FDL. Um <laughs> Lastly, th- this also just came out, uh, I think it was September 3rd, so we're, we're only about you know two weeks out from it debuting. Completely caught me off guard. Off guard. Spellbreak. Oh? Now, this, this, I think, first came to my attention via the PC gaming show that we had this year. Like, it just came out, you know, it was kind of out of left field. Yeah, like we were kind of watching that. I, I kind of remember seeing something, but going like, oh, okay. Yeah. Well, and, it, it didn't yeah. really jump out at me. Yeah, and it's it's a free game. It's a it's a battle royale, which I think may have like you know as soon as you hear battle royale, you're like, oh no, here we oh, go. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I just feel like instant diarrhea. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's, it's like you think about like PUBG, <laughs> like, you think oh, about okay. uh, you know all, all you know Fortnite and all that. Um, but I, I feel like they really captured something very very cool here. Like uh, and you know, it, really? you know it, it is a BR. You do drop in like every other BR from like the sky. But the yeah, the concept, I, I can think of that. Yeah. So there are some s- familiar elements, but the part that really got me into it, like really kind of snapped my attention, and I I didn't expect it to do this, uh, was the the spell combo system essentially. So. Uh, to start off with, you, oh. st- you you choose a primary. Uh, basically, you have these gauntlets, and these gauntlets contain like magic powers to them. Um, and so mm-hmm. you choose at the start of your match uh, before you go in uh, whether what what is your primary magic gauntlet, and you can choose from six classes. There's lightning, wind, fire, earth, um, poison. Can and- I get the infinity gauntlet? No, oh, actually, when. Infinity- <laughs> If only <laughs> just snap, you know, um, or at least I know I'll make it to the top 25. That's right. That's right. Um, <laughs> and uh, let's see, I, I think I, you know, fire, fire. Did I mention fire? I don't know if I mentioned. Okay. So that, that's the main, that's know. the main six. Your alternate can be any one of the other of those six. So, you know, uh, basically another Ooh. five, if you want. And what you do is, so as you're going along, you can pick up like different, you know, you're, you're opening up these caches and these caches going to have higher level gauntlets. So it's, you know, has like, you know, kind of like standard MMO stuff. So you like, yeah, you start with the basic and then you can upgrade to like, you know, uh, blue, green, you know, it's like Epic, you know, or rare Epic. And then you get all the way up to like a legendary, uh, glove and, you know, other equipment. Uh, the match is obviously very short because it's BR. So you're talking, you know, anywhere from like, you know, 30 seconds upon landing to, you know, you can go another, you know, 10, maybe 15 minutes. So it's very, very quick turnover. Um, but the spell comboing is what makes it so fun. And the things like, obviously, you're scrounging for all this equipment in in these, you know, hovels and castles and whatnot. And mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. sometimes you'll get something that you, re- you know, obviously, again, you can set it your primary so you can kind of get used to a certain style, but you're always kind of scrounging for whatever your secondary is and things you can combine spells. So like things like, you know, let's say you're running a toxicology. So you're running the poison main gauntlet and you can put out this poison cloud. Well, if you hit it with like uh, a frozen uh, an ice gauntlet, it becomes a frozen death cloud. So if you catch a player in there, they're, they're like frozen in place inside this poison and death cloud. Poison. Taking this dot, uh, oh. you, you can do poison and wind. So suddenly you have this tornado with the poison cloud. Um, and like, again, all these combos there. And so like, you know, there's like, you can put up flame walls with your fire one. And then you can, um, you know, again, combo with the wind and suddenly have this firestorm going on. You can do it with a lightning oh. and so it, it's a lightning, you know, firestorm. Uh, and again, like all these crazy combos and then, you know, it, kind of like these basic you know you're kind of like fleeing spells so to speak 
uh, the the wind one has like you're, you're putting out the, like these wind shurikens and you know fires these fireballs. Oh God, Earth, this sounds awesome! Like it, like I'm telling you, you, and you know, it's kind of hard to explain, but at the same time, you know, it's like you you kind of get the concept, and it's like it's free, so I, I'd say it's highly worth checking out. And it's I, kind of I, like that Magicka, it's like that Magicka game in a way, but it battle mm-hmm. royale. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Absolutely, oh, and and because it's you know quick tomer. It's 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 a ton of fun. Now I, I've not gotten the winner winner chicken dinner <laughs> yet, but I've gotten to like top three uh, is about as high as I've made it. You can do squads, you can do solo. Um, mm-hmm. There's a whole cosmetic system, so there's kind of like the standard you know setup for like microtransaction eventually. Um, but yeah, it's it's a very simple concept, and it's one of those like yeah, this would be great to like just hop in and out, you know, in for a game, out for a game, and it is super super fun and really, and it it's, doesn't come across like standard BR. So you think like the PUBG and whatnot, where if like someone picks up the sniper rifle, like they snipe you from halfway across the you know the map, and yeah. you're like, well, where the hell were they? You, you know, it's like you know, like I have no idea what's going on, and whereas in this one. Uh, th- there, I say there is a sniper class. The frost one has kind of like this frost bow, but it takes right. time to charge up, and it's not really a one hit wonder unless you're really low health. So it's actually right. possible to survive like the initial encounters or just like the first hit. And then you have all well, they're either, not far away. They're like not that far away where it's yeah, like, oh, yeah, fucking like, find them. Like, and, oh, and, 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 yeah, and there's a, basically a tracer too. So you can kind of see like, okay, the shot came from that direction. So if I like break contact, I can at least, you know, survive or do something. So it puts in a lot wow. of things to like give you information without it, you know, being OP to, the, to you know, those who are getting the jump on you and doesn't feel like, you know, oh, it's like I'm not doing anything to the enemy either. So, so I, Go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, no. Go ahead. Sorry. I, I just, I, you know, it's just, I feel it's it's fairly well balanced, at least out of the gate right now. So can I say this one might actually get me into battle royales? And let me tell you why. Um, I couldn't get into Fortnite because yeah. if I'm going to be aiming and shooting guns, the last thing I need to worry about is building my fucking fort. Oh yeah, 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 um, there's, yeah, there's, and yeah. There's not that overload of like, oh, you got to like, and then you got to kill people at the same time. You're like, no, you just like, at worst, you got to open it. All open the a power, thing. all the power to y'all that can do that. I'm just too fucking old and slow. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I've accepted that. I've made my peace with that. I drink it away on Fridays. I'm good with it. Um, but I will say that the uh, and that was the same thing. Like. I thought, uh, what's the other one on, was it Epic? Apex? Like, I thought that was a cool oh, yeah. idea. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I thought that had some really great ideas for the genre, like the ping system, I think is right. is one of the most genius things ever. But to me, it was, again, it's just more of the same. It's another shooter, just like Black Ops, Blackout, whatever that was. Like, right. it's, yeah. it's another shooter battle royale. Like, it's boring to me. So that's why, like... And I, I didn't even put this down for games that I played, but I've been kind of playing this off and on for one of the reasons you said. And again, like as a parent, um, there's like this sweet spot of time I get at night where like we've just put the kids to bed. Mm-hmm, my mm-hmm. wife, you know, we'll go and chill and, and relax for a little bit. And I'll take like an hour and kind of do my thing in here you know, in the office. Right. Or like I'll come out like or you know, on nights where I'll just come out and hang out with her and I'll be playing a game. I started playing Fall Guys mm-hmm. on mm-hmm. PS4. Because it was on the it was on the, the like PlayStation version of games with gold that Xbox has. Whatever it is that you get the free games every month. That game is ridiculously fun. Oh it's great, isn't it? It's so goddamn fun and it's so stupid. And there's <laughs> <laughs> like all I hear in my head. And again, Nick and I are older. So some of y'all may not get this reference, though. Most of you will, considering the theme of the show. Like, I'll be like, screw on. He just tried to jump up on that fan. and did the double X twisted twister. And it's like, if you ever saw MX, uh, what was it? Most extreme elimination challenge. Yeah. The uh, castle or whatever. MS, uh, well, I guess that's what it was actually called, but in America on Spike TV. Oh, he's like, yeah, 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 MXC, yeah. Most Extreme Elimination Challenge. And it mm-hmm. was just like this Japanese game show that was basically Fall Guys with people <laughs> going through obstacle courses. And then 
whatever theme, whatever that show was trying to do, like the American producers just threw away and had these like American commentary guys just doing, <laughs> saying the dumbest shit. And it was the greatest thing to watch when you were drunk and stoned in college. I speak from experience, but like, that's what fall guys reminds me of. And I think my favorite part about it is it's like, it's all these random obstacle courses. You're, you're scrambling against a hundred people to try to make it to a finish line. And you know what? Like, the longest match, assuming you, you, you're you half decent, which I am, so that says nothing, uh, but I'm able to at least make it to, like, the top 50. That happens within a matter of, like, five minutes. You know, and it's like you're either eliminated and you keep going, or you, you know, work your way to the top. I haven't won it yet, but it is one of those, like, if I need to, if I just want to jump in and play something for ten minutes, like, these are great games to do that. And, and mm-hmm. you have, I mean, Literally, I almost made the mistake of going and starting the download for Spellbreak, but then I would have gone, gone robot through half this podcast as my shit connection. Oh boy, I, no, no robots. But, yeah, no, I'm, I'm going to be doing that first thing, man. I, I, that sounds like a blast to me. Oh and yeah, and it might, it might be the only thing. <laughs> <laughs> Pull me away from another game that is on PC Game Pass, and that is Crusader Kings 3. Oh, yeah. So, I didn't get it on Game Pass, because I am a a huge Paradox uh, fanboy. I bought it on Steam. I wanted to get, you know, get some money their way, and... Oh, man. Um, (laughs) Okay. (laughs) So, have you ever just wanted to play Game of Thrones? Like, not as an action game, but have you ever wanted to be on the council <laughs> do your thing and just scheme your way to power or use your smoking diplomatic skills? All right, so let me explain Crusader Kings 3 to you. There is, it's a strategy game. And yes, if you want to paint the map and go Captain War and and wage war across you know the entire world and take territory you can do that and you can you can absolutely do that and expand your power base and your kingdom but i'd say you'd be missing out on a portion of what makes this game so fucking special and i would say it's uh it's my game of the year cyberpunk might be one of the next best things i've ever played but i can see it now like ck3 is going to be my number one just based on it came out two weeks ago, and I have 60 hours in it already. That's good. That's um, good. And Yeah, yeah. And like, I'm like, I can't wait to fucking play this when everybody goes to bed. <laughs> um, and it is... Somebody, somebody said it, and I feel like it does the game a disservice, but it's going in the right direction. It's like medieval total war... But not with the massive army battles. Like think the campaign layer, the deep campaign layer, and then think like the Sims. Sounds crazy. I know. Just give me a minute. <laughs> um, it's called. It, they call it a medieval dynasty simulator, and the whole goal of the game, at least in the base game, if you play by the base rules is you can start your family dynasty in in one of two eras in Crusader Kings 3. The earliest era, I think, is 863, which is the invasion, uh, the Viking invasion of England after Ragnar Lothbrok is executed by King Ewa. Like, if you ever watch Vikings, Ragnar gets thrown in the snake pit, and then uh, and this is history, so I ain't spoiling a fucking series for you. You can look it up, <laughs> um, or at least history slash myth. Right. And his his sons that uh, the people that claim to be his sons that are verified to have existed because they fucking took over half of England, um, then invade England as vengeance with what was called the Great Heathen Army. So you can start in that era, and you and you can play as literally any ruling figure at that point in time whether it's a king a duke which was like a step down from a king and that they ruled several counties or you can play a count which as the term you may not know means you rule over a county and you could play as pretty much any living person at that point in time and they cover 
a major swath of the world map from Iceland to, I think, past India, including Africa. Like, it's wild. And as the name suggests, religions are a big part of it. Not religion, but religions. In that the, the religion your culture follows will dictate everything from can I have multiple wives? Which is a good thing, because the goal of this game is whatever you, era you start from is to make your dynasty survive till in the base game, I think it's 1403. And that involves like, obviously marriage, but like marrying the right people, because you might start out, like if you start out as King Alfred of Wessex, um, who eventually becomes Alfred the Great in, in 863, um, you start out as him. He is a fucking Superman. Like his stats are through the goddamn roof. But you got to marry somebody that's half decent or you're going to have what's happening to you, which what happened to me. I basically married a princess of France. And this gives you an idea how the game goes. Um, and we got along good. She had some she was like a great spy master. Like she had great intrigue and I would work with her. She would like sow discord in my vassals that didn't like me. She mm. would she would sit in their courts and start discovering their secrets. And those secrets she'd pass on to me, which then become hooks. And this is a new system that's in Crusader Kings 3 that's not in 2, where you can learn something about somebody that might be a friend of yours, or that might be your vassal, that you're their liege. And now you've got them by the the balls or, you know, the ovaries. And, (laughs) like, you can literally be like, yo... Give me fifty gold, or uh, I'm going to tell everybody you just fucked a horse. And like, sounds silly, but it can happen. And that is a major sin in a a Catholic uh, ruled kingdom. And you could blackmail these people for like money or favors, or like, hey, uh, I'm going to war. I need you to give me more troops than is part of your usual medieval contract. Like you're, you're, you know, you're contract with your feudal lord was like oh i'll give you you know a quarter of my my levies to your standing army when you go fight a war and that's like nah now you're gonna give me half and you're not gonna say anything about it like (laughs) and you're gonna like it like if you really want to get an idea what this game is about just like go read some of the stories that come out of this like and some of them are crazy like some people <laughs> some guy was was role playing as uh in the same time period king constantine of scotland and his intrigue rating is really high and he folk and then that's the other thing you have lifestyle focuses based on your high skills to where you decide like what is that area you want to focus on in your life And the person playing him focused on intrigue and then seduction. So all he did was just fucked his way into every kingdom possible. Like, (laughs) secretly, open marriages. Like, he would marry this person and then, like, screw her sister. (laughs) Like, um, he sent, the guy sent a screenshot. He's like, yeah, this is where my kingdom ended up once I formed my own religion and made incest cool. He's like... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and he literally did like it was not a sin and it was seen as a benefit in the religion uh he's like i'm basically making the targaryens this is my sister daughter wife <laughs> <laughs> and dude i swear to god like this what what makes this game so special is the stories that just come out of the emergent gameplay and and it's deep like the like the uh, Crusader Kings 2 was a very hard game to approach. The tutorial was fucking garbage. Absolute garbage. So unless you watched a bunch of YouTube videos, you just it and you had to be really determined to get into it. Uh you just wouldn't get into it. And like it had 
similar stories, but this one just does it a world better where it's like, instead of just portraits, now you have living, breathing, randomized 3d models based on the traits of the parents. And like, so everybody looks unique and different and they look like real people. And you're just like, Oh shit. Like it gives you that layer of attachment. And then there's the whole hook and blackmail system. And like, you'll literally start to have your own, uh, game of Thrones style King's council where it's like you are watching your vassals with a heavy eye, and then there's the people that are your friends. Like, it's a vassal you know you're tight with. They're not going to betray you because they have the honesty trait, and they see you as their friend. You're like, yep, that's somebody I can count on to go stab somebody for me and not tell anybody about it. Like, it, I, I'm telling you, whatever medieval, bravehearty fantasy you want to live out in this game, you could pretty much do. And... It's incredible. I, I have put so many hours into it, playing as so many different uh, different rulers, different characters, different kingdoms, and like it's amazing how like you can play as Vikings and now you're like a Satru Norse religion, and you can take concubines and like there's something awfully satisfying about invading a kingdom of like the Catholic kings that fucking whooped your ass for some reason because you didn't, you know, worship them. And then you go and kick their ass and it's like, Oh, I captured your queen in that battle. Hello, new wife. Like, <laughs> It's just, it's a really, really fun game. Uh, Paradox made probably the best tutorial they've ever done in that they finally made this game approachable. Um, they've made it easy to get into. They have varying difficulty levels so that you can actually start to learn this game at your own pace. And I, I promise you, if literally like playing as Littlefinger or playing as Robert Baratheon and trying to save a failing kingdom or as Daenerys Targaryen and trying to uh, rebuild what was once yours, like you can do that in these games. And then you throw in the third layer, which is the modding tools and modding community. They released the modding tools already. And the modding community in Crusader Kings has always been incredible, but like they've literally already got a world of darkness mod out to where you can play as. Oh, oh nice. Like, and yeah, you can play as, like the the in the medieval I guess world of darkness, which I know nothing about, but you can literally play as like the beginning um masters of like House Tremere or House Ventry. Like it's really, really wild what people are already doing with this game. There is a Game of Thrones mod already in the works. Like it's gonna be <laughs> uh, and a Lord of the Rings one as well. They've already got Rohan laid oh, out. Oh nice. Out. Yeah, uh, like I'm playing play the hell out of that one. Mm -hmm. It's just phenomenal. Paradox finally hit their master stroke. And I and that's what we were kind of getting at at the beginning of the podcast. Like the past two weeks, we've seen <clears throat> at a bare minimum two absolute masterpieces released, and that's Wasteland 3 and Crusader Kings 3. They're incredible games. I've been playing both. Uh, but Crusader Kings 3, since the day it has come out, has literally eaten all my time. I cannot put this game down i have had ridiculous amounts of fun with it and to the point where i'm starting to write down what's actually happening and like rough notes for a story just because it would be fun to put up on like the reddit pages for this game like some of the stuff that people have, have done in their game sessions will just have you bent over laughing and then going oh my god i can't believe this fucking happened in a game like it's just nuts like one guy fell in love with his dog, literally, and, <laughs> and got caught and beheaded. Um, it's just amazing. It's an amazing game. Um, yeah, I mean that's that's what I've been up to. That's what you've been up to. I can't wait to check out Spellbreak. That sounds yeah, it, it, it's incredible. definitely worth a look. Definitely worth a look. For sure, uh, I'm definitely gonna check it out. Uh, we'll move on to release highlights again. Holy shit! Aside from what we already mentioned. Nvidia, dude, take it away! Like I, I couldn't believe this this week. Yeah, so obviously the the news is dropping about a whole ton of things as we're getting into the you know this kind of fall season. It's just usually when the new products start to come out. 
Uh, so yeah, NVIDIA have, has announced the 3000 series uh, graphics cards. Uh, and if, unless you've been living under a rock, it's like, holy crap, this is, this is oh one God. to pay attention to. Um, <clears throat> basically, uh, they have a, a series of three of them, at least on the main NVIDIA, obviously all the, all the other manufacturers will have like their own variants uh, off these, but the the flagships are basically the 370, which is their their most economical. Uh, it's being price pointed at five hundred dollars, which is fantastic for a new card. And the thing that's blowing everyone out of the water is that it's the same performance as a 2080 Ti, which was basically a twelve hundred dollar card. <laughs> yeah, so it's like, yeah, and, it, and like everyone's in a panic. Like, yeah, you know, there's people who's bought twenty, you know, recently bought twenty eighty Ti cards. And they're like, oh no. <laughs> and it's just funny you mentioned that because I was talking to my coworker David about this about mm. four months ago, and I was like, I'm like I'm torn. I'm looking at that twenty eighty Ti. He goes, wait. He's like, just wait. He's like, because the new series is right around the yep. corner. Mm -hmm. And he's like, you never know what they're going to surprise us with. And holy shit, was he right? But he even messaged me this week. He's like, I know I said surprise, but holy shit, this blew me away. <laughs> yeah, just unbelievable. You can get the same performance as a 2080 Ti for less than half. Um, awesome. Uh, like, from what I've gathered, basically, it's, it seemed like they were beta testing with the 2000 series and that's why it was so expensive and then they figured yeah. it all out and 3000 is coming out and it's just like everything's super gravy um the middle of the line is the 380 so this is about two times the performance of a 2080 so it, you know it's 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 up there this is about a 700 dollar uh performance uh, dollar performance that's literally 200 dollars more and you're getting twice the performance yeah. And, yeah and so it's like you know if you have the cash push for that why not uh, and, and then, of, of course, the absolute, you know, creme de la creme is the 390. This this is a $1,500 card. Um, it is is like leaps and bounds beyond, but it, you know, more or less from, you know, uh, the, the, the now, granted, this is all advertised. So, obviously, once it gets in the hand of testers, which I think they're all under still in, like, NDA and all that, because everything, you know, all the tech uh, yeah. stuff I've been following, basically, they have them. They've been able to show off, like, the physical card like you know it's like oh this thing look is long and weighs a ton um but yeah. they can't show the actual specs on it that they've tested yet but um you know obviously we'll, once once we they put them through the actual paces and not the, the the marketing spiel um you know we'll see but this is you know coming from nvidia itself they're saying it's going to be you know this level of performance 390 is 1500 dollars like Honestly, it's going to be for people who just have like the dollar dollar bills and and got to have the Ferrari, you know, in, the, in, in on the driveway, or you're, you're talking like you know graphic animation, super high end needs, video editing, something like that. So from my perspective, in terms of practicality, it, it's a little overboard. And honestly, a three seventy or a three eighty is like the way to go. If you're look if you're looking to get a new card, uh, man. Uh, granted, I'm on a, a ten eighty uh, Ti. So am I, and that's why I'm looking at the the screenshot you yeah. dumped here on the generational leap. Yeah, like let me put it to you this way: all I can play games that came out yesterday on Ultra, and I'm doing fine. Yeah, like but, like 1080 is not you know it's it, it's just starting to breathe heavy on like the really you know in difficult stuff. It doesn't. I don't think it has ray tracing, which is the new you know the new spiel. Oh, it um, yeah, that was that was like too new when I bought this. Thing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But other than that, like. 1080 still still hauling hauling the mail uh but yeah it's like in terms of an upgrade like yeah now now's the time to jump to that either 370 like i'm 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 heavily looking at the 380 um uh i do want to wait so uh as a response amd is having oh, their gonna, online reveal 70 yeah yeah amd is going to have their reveal on october the 8th so if you if you you know if you want to see like okay what are they doing versus what is nvidia doing we'll see you know maybe maybe they'll price match or you know try to undercut if you're looking like for like the most bargain uh card out there but at face value as of today yeah 370 380 that's the way to go i mean i would say like yeah like you said 200 bucks more 380 it's like yeah if you if you that's can yeah yeah if you can scrouge for it go go for the 380 no, three seventy. Three eighty Cadillac. Oh, you're gonna go. You're gonna go for the. Th but no, three eighty is the Ferrari. That's the the super expensive one, I think. No, no, three ninety is the the fifteen hundred. Oh, okay, that's so, not even on the graph then. So it yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, it's not. Yeah, it's it's it, it. You know, it does have a performance leap to it, um, but it's fifteen hundred bucks. So 
Yeah, no, I'm I, I'm leaning on the myself. Yes, yeah, the yeah. 380 at 700 bucks. Yeah, yeah, it's a, yeah. Like I said, 380 I think is the way to go, especially if you you know if you're thinking about 370 at 500 is like see if you can yeah. pull together another 200 because yeah, I think that 380 is going to do it. Yeah, that 380 is going to be the sweet spot uh, to pick up for Nvidia. So, but yeah, unbelievable. Like I mean, like cards haven't been this cheap and new cards th- oh. this cheap in a long time very long time and, and to be honest with you um uh, i don't want to be that fanboy person but i really could care less what amd releases and i don't i don't i don't say that with like hoity toitiness it's just i've always bought nvidia and it's always done right by me like my cards have always lasted well beyond my processor half the time in that like they've always they've always been able to like haul the load until it was time to really get something new and it's like you could you could buy like i could buy that 380 and i'd be good for two generations like i i'd still be fine with it you know what i mean i i can't say that for amd but i don't know because i've never bought them but i just know like when i make an investment in an nvidia card like it's lasted me it's lasted me a matter of years and uh I I saw this this week and I was just like, holy shit! They they are pulling out every stop with these, um, and it it just the specs are just nuts, just nuts. Yeah, yeah, and, and, you know it's got like everything. You know the two eighty higher performance. I think it has even more ray tracing. Like the yeah. the only thing that some people are looking at is like, oh, you know the the three ninety is the only one with ECI bridging support. But honestly, most games aren't really yeah. supporting that yeah. anymore like it, like you have to jump through a few hoops to even get it to work so it's like you know honestly you don't need two cards you know it, it, no it, anymore. yeah it's like game game you know not that games won't ever support it but there there hasn't been a, a big call for it it's like it's it, not even that they don't need it at this yeah, point yeah. With, yeah it's true yeah they don't need it absolutely with like the technology that they're packing in to the individual cards at this point like Having another one isn't going to do you any good because of the 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 bottleneck between just communicating data between the two like that that is something that I did note with um it, with both cards they are <laughs> it was a PCIe 4.0 compatible which right. today's boards don't support if you're running Intel now I think I, I think the there are some boards on the horizon I think the i9 is is going to support those. Mm-hmm. But as of today, like my board today is not 4.0 compliant. Now, that being said, it will, you know, it will work on a 3.0 board. You don't, you don't have to like upgrade your entire computer just to get these things to work. The only thing that'll happen is there'll be some throttling if it ever has to go above that 3.0 mark into the 4.0 PCIe. This is yeah. where I'm curious to see where the testing comes in because that's 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 on everyone's mind. It's like, yeah. does okay, that make a difference? Yeah, does it make that a difference? Like. Like on paper, you know, most of what I've been reading is probably not. It'll probably be okay. There'll probably be very limited games, at least today, that will push it beyond that will need that 4.0. Um, but again, yeah, that, that, but yeah, but that that's where the testing comes in. Now, obviously, future proofing. I mean, yeah, probably your next upgrade. Yeah, you'll probably want to get a 4.0 board because games and you know two, three, four years might need, need that level. Yeah, might need it. Who knows? But, but again, I also feel like we're kind of getting to that plateau where it's like yeah, we haven't really seen games yet that are pushing that next envelope. Maybe Cyberpunk will be that game, but you know, I mean, the games I'm seeing right now, like they all look great, but it's just like, well, it's not, you know, next generation great. <laughs> yeah, hey, yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, no, I mean it'd be interesting to see what happens. Uh, I'd love, to, I'd love to see these like once they get into the hands of players, like, and like Tom's hardware really gets to to really run it through the mud and and see what happens. Uh, the other one, I, I have to get on this one because uh, I, I work for a subsidiary. Uh, disclaimer of Microsoft. Uh, the Xbox One price points revealed. They're great. Indeed, yeah, I, I agree with you. I think. If you're not uh, in the market to to buy a gaming PC, this is like this is the cream of the crop. Um, can we talk about the names for a minute? <laughs> sure. Yeah. <laughs> How can um, we make it more confusing? 
Yeah, we were talking about this at work this week, and I was like, I can't imagine trying to tell my mother when I was 10 years old that I need you to get me the Xbox Series X and not the Series S. Because if I told her this over the phone, she would have thought it was an S when I said X. On top of that, she wouldn't know what she was grabbing if she grabbed it anyway, unless there's a giant fucking X on the box. Oh, wait, there is, because it's an Xbox. So that's not going to make a difference. Um, I, I say that, like, tongue-in-cheek, but, like, it's very obvious if you're going to go buy a PlayStation, which one's better. I need the new PlayStation. Well, we have PS4s and PS5s. Well, 5 sounds newer. I'll grab that. Um the naming scheme that they're doing with this generation of Xboxes is just, like, a total fucking head-scratcher to me. Like, I just... Having worked in retail in my younger days, like, I just can't imagine what, like, whatever the... uh, Maybe GameStop's still, you know, selling stuff, but stores like them are going, oh, Jesus Christ. Like, I... uh, They're ready to cut wrists over the holiday season. No, 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 you Mm -hmm. want x no you want the s like well, what yeah. does that mean oh i don't know <laughs> one has a drive one doesn't and and a shitty amount of memory um <laughs> like i i don't know dude i feel but, like it's gonna lead to confusion uh more than oh, anything man. i mean Look at we will be you yeah 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 exactly that, that that's a perfect example it's like which one is it? we or we you and you know this, this, like this somebody that wanted the new we for christmas my, one of my my friend's younger brothers and his mother came home with a Wii. She was <laughs> like the wrong one. Wii. Like, no, I wanted the Wii U. She says, "No, you said a new Wii." <laughs> <laughs> like that happens more than you think. Like I, I don't know. I mean, the price point is fantastic. Like let's put that out. Um, for the hardware that's in the. Uh, Excuse me, especially the the more powerful version. I think four ninety nine is is getting to be right on where I had anticipated. Um, I thought Microsoft may have gone a little lower just to shortchange Sony. Um, has Sony announced their price yet? I don't think so. No. So they've they've teased uh, what the devices are. So there's going to be there's basically going to be two versions. There's an uh, I think an online version and a disc version. <laughs> They're doing that too. Yeah, they're doing that too, but they have not revealed their price. They did reveal that September 16th, so this coming week, uh, they will have their reveal event. And and so a lot of it's baited breath because you know, a lot of people saw that price in in in, much much like the NVIDIA one, it's like holy crap, is this affordable? Um very so what is Sony's response gonna be? Because like the general estimate seems to be that. Sony's, you know, based on the equipment that they're touting, we're I think they're, it's 599. Yeah, they're talking minimum 500. Uh, you know, and obviously that doesn't mean that they can't pull, you know, discounts or or things like that, you know, as well. Or I think the money. I mean, well, they've yeah. done it for years and so has Microsoft, but it's a oh, matter absolutely. of how much they're willing to eat. Yeah, exactly. So, we'll see what their response is. Uh, to it and and kind of go from there. Um, so I'm I'm eager to see, yeah, how much is it? Because honestly, like the Xbox, and, and you know, like I, like I mentioned uh, in in the notes here, that it, it's a great price point if you don't have a PC that's capable, sure. or you're looking for an entry level console for you know your kids or something like that. For me, it's like I have a PC that's more than capable. <laughs> Hallelujah, yeah. Game Pass, because everything basically oh. on Xbox is available now on PC, and or a lot have been has been coming to PC. So it's like yeah. for me, it's like. I'm not, I, you know, I'm not impressed by this only by the fact that I can play all this stuff on my PC. And, you know, I, again, Microsoft's playing a very smart game here, I think, because, oh, I because of the Game Pass and all that. It's like they realize, like, oh, we can get into both markets. We can cover the console and have that there. And, and I think, like, having a cheaper, basically, PC is what this is. Yeah. And also the high end PC players, we get them with the Game Pass, and the Game Pass is where we're going to make the money. Uh, and they're, they've got to be making a hand over fist uh, I, I, I mean, based on their stock price. <laughs> um, yeah. no, like I, I say that half jokingly, but like when you just look at the amount 
of stuff they are throwing at Game Pass every week. And like the publishers that and developers that they bring into the Microsoft family, you know, as far as gaming. And it's like day one, you're getting that game on Game Pass. It like is. it's not you yeah. know, it's not like Gamefly or, or Netflix where it's like you're waiting three months for it to get old and then you finally get your chance to get a hand on it. Like it's incredible what they've done with this. Yeah, and, and actually speaking of, uh, you keep talking about Game Pass, they are growing the family with EA Play. So EA yeah, I saw is that. joining. I, I did not see this one coming. It's like, oh, they, they you know. my fucking mind, dude. That, that's huge because it now, it now brings into, into question who else is willing to jump on board? Like, could, you, you, could we see an Ubisoft jump on? Could we see, I'm trying to think who else, um... I think I think that's about it. Like EA and Ubisoft always seem to like to be the major satellite publishers. Yeah. Um, For in terms of their own game subscription service. Yeah. So it's like, ooh, ooh, because yeah, I will, I will absolutely hold out for a lot of the stuff on EA. That's like, yeah, there's games on there. It's like, yeah, I'd like to play those, but it's like, but, huh. I, ain't but, I, but I ain't gonna play. It's like, it's like, it's like I'm not gonna throw down the money for it or whatever. It's like, but if if there's a possibility of you know EA games now coming into the Game Pass, like I mean, we're talking about like Assassin's Creed here. Um, yes, you know, it's, it's it's hitting in November around the, the same time of the release of the new console. Yeah, it's like, are we are we gonna see Valhalla through this? Or like, oh, like, like I I happily will wait for Valhalla to come through on EA Play. If we see, well, Valhalla releases the same time as the new Xbox. So if yeah. I were a betting person, <laughs> <laughs> um, this is fucking genius. Like, and uh, and the reason I say it's genius, you know, there is major money being made here because oh, if, oh, yeah. if you asked me two weeks ago, would we ever see EA Play come to Game Pass? I'd say you're fucking insane. Like, there's no way. Like, that's where EA still has a good market. Mm-hmm. They've, you know, they've got their corner. They've got their sports games, and like the Origin uh, subscription service that they have, which I have. Like I was just sitting there, like, there's no way. Why would they give it to Game Pass? And it's like, oh shit, they gave it to Game Pass. And if that doesn't show you how fucking good Game Pass is doing right now, like, it's top of the heat, man. It's it's king of the hill. And, and uh, now, now that I have a chance to also think about it, I mean, EA's been doing this weird. Uh, I say weird. It, it's been weird up to this point because EA has been very so isolated for the I don't know how many years. Like ever since they did, th- they had their own subscription service. Yeah. Um. I would say at least five, but, but they've had their own platform. You know the the EA Origins and all that, and they've been so separated from everything. But more recently, they've been doing a lot more integrations with like Steam. Um, yeah. Their, their past EA play, they were they were touting like oh like. You can now pick it up through Steam, and you're you're still logging into their service. You're still like in through Steam, and that which you can then connect to your EA account, and you're still going in that way. But they've they've been kind of like opening up the floodgates a little bit in terms of that interaction. And now with Game Pass, like I honestly think like this is kind of like a new move for them. And I'm wondering if Ubisoft might do the same thing because Ubisoft, I think, has been slightly with with, uh, Steam, but not as easily integrated like it's still like yeah, it's you, you pick it up epic, there uh, you're going to the you play game store yeah 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 exactly like like you can get it through steam but you end up getting a code and you play you still plug it into like you know the you play like if they can get the level of integration that the ea is doing it's like i think ubisoft will be onto something as, as equally solid and, and that can right. open the door for them to you know potentially join game pass as well yeah i mean at this point i think it's it's a very obvious when it comes to Game subscription services, Microsoft nailed it. They found yeah, the sweet spot. Absolutely. And, and it's obviously working for the developers, um, based on what I've heard from In Exile and uh, some of the other development houses that they bought, Obsidian as well. Um, it's working out very well for them. Like it's it's and it's obviously working out well for Microsoft. So everybody's getting their money, the money that's due, and seems to be doing all right. Um yeah, I, I I see that being like the Netflix for games at this point. Um, but yeah, I mean, you have an, another point here. I, I didn't want to gloss over it because uh, I, I played this for about an hour. And this was a great one, too, uh, this week. Star Renegade. Yes. Um, 
that's out on Game Pass as well, uh, PC Game Pass. It's quite fun. Uh, like roguelike, um, 16 bit, kind of a, um, like a fighter slash tactics kind of game. Uh, it, it's not fighter. It's like, it's like a Final Fantasy sci fi. Yeah. RPG, uh, you know, retro RPG looking thing. I mean, we'd seen this back in, in PAX yeah, as well, and it looked fantastic there. And what's really great about it, they, they took a system I felt, and I've, I've talked about on here before, that I was like, who oh, can excuse me? Oh. <laughs> oh, children. Uh, no, a, a, a system that I raved about, and I've been wanting to see in other games, and they brought it. They have their basically their own version of the Nemesis system from uh, Shadow uh... of the so like you'll run into to generals and stuff in this game, and like if you lose, like the new team you come up with, you're gonna have to face them again, and they're gonna be tougher. But so are your guys because it's a roguelike game, and you hopefully had enough like whatever to unlock whatever. It's a really well done game. It's a lot of fun. The story's neat. Um, yeah, I, I would say don't let this one pass by. It's just another reason to grab Game Pass and play this game. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, I'm looking forward to this. Like, uh, definitely want to see if I can't download it this week and maybe maybe get into it. If I can break myself away from Wasteland, damn you, Wasteland! Oh, yeah, damn if I can wasteland. break myself away from Crusader, <laughs> Crusader Kings, I'm going to play Wasteland. Oh, I know. Suffer. But we uh, saw this at PAX East, uh, and and coincidentally enough, PAX is going online, or it is already on online. It's actually going on all uh this this week uh oh really i missed yeah. the kickoff yeah so a kickoff was just this weekend so it kicked off i think on was it either friday or yes, saturday I, I think it was friday oh, okay. um so it hasn't gone on for too long but it's going for nine days so you know anyone who's gone to pax knows that you know west goes four days east goes for now four days i think australia goes three days um but yeah, Trust it, me, two days and your feet will die. If you're right. <laughs> That's right. So this is actually going on nine days. There's panels going on everywhere. Um, so definitely go to the PAX website. You can, you know, check out the scheduling and they have a ton of awesome panels, you know, on all wide range of, of nerd and, and video game stuff that you can tune into a lot of interesting stuff uh, that, you know, have the usual merch. If you're, if you're, you're, you're PAX merch collector, they even have a virtual floor really yeah they have a map and everything now you, you don't you know you're not walking through like vr mode but he's like you're able to click on links and it has all sorts of various uh companies a lot of them were advertised at gamescom so uh, at the ga- online gamescom thing so nothing oh. yeah even so yeah like nothing too much that isn't new but they do even have like an indie indie game section which i, just, I always find great there were a few gems in there that i want to see um, it, it certainly beefed up my Steam, you know, watch list, wish list <laughs> as I've been yeah. watching them. Uh, but yeah, I, definitely check that out. Oh, I plan to. Uh, that'll probably be the rest of my night tonight. <laughs> like I, I just, I can't wait to see what's coming. Just, it's been such a great two weeks mm-hmm. for games, and like it's only getting better with Valhalla on the horizon and Cyberpunk. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like what a fucking change from last year. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. My 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 fall timeline is is quickly filling up. It's gonna be. I mean, it's kind of already kicked off already. You know, you know Wasteland <laughs> Crusader. Uh, at the end of the month, we got Star Wars Squadrons dropping. I'm looking forward to that. Oh, Jesus Christ, that's October. <laughs> and, oh yeah, mm-hmm. and then we got Cyberpunk, uh, Valhalla, and I think I think that's about it. Like by the time we hit December, it's like okay, I don't think there's anything. <laughs> There's stuff coming out, but yeah, like December's like, okay, there's nothing in there that really interests me. So it's just going to be, it's going to be overload. (laughs) Oh, I know. Right. Oh man. It's just so good. It's so good. All the crap coming out. And then speaking of more, I saw this too. Got a nice Prince of Persia remake on the horizon. Yeah. I did not see this coming. Yeah. I'm digging that. I I agree with you. I I love that we're getting a remake, but that's one of my favorite old school series. I would love to see uh, a sequel I would, or a new game in that series, yeah. whatever we want to call it. Like yeah. That is a classic series, man. Yeah, it, so. and I was kind of like watching, like, I thought, at first I thought it was a new game, and then I realized, oh, oh, it's a remake, but I mean, they're making it look incredibly sharp, but I'm wondering, is is this way of just kind of testing the waters a little bit, like, if people go oh, for the remake, longer, yeah, yeah, yeah like, I think it's a temperature test. 
And it's like, if enough people pick this up, it's like, okay, yeah, let's go ahead and green light another Prince of Persia game. And, you know, because like so many people want the remake, let's make a new one. I'd bet money on it. Because that is that is a long standing series mm-hmm. that had a shit ton of sunlight in the early 2000s. Uh, people were super into it. They kind of ran it into the ground with like the last game because they just, the direction was shit. But uh, the story, the setting, the mechanics, like it's still classic platformer, uh, classic. Well, I guess they made it action game too. Right. But yeah. Okay. It, Puzzle action. Yeah. It'd be great to see. Uh, what comes what comes out of that? I I would I'm gonna play the hell out of that when it comes out. The the original is one of my favorite favorite games because that was like one of the first games where your character moved like a real human being. Like if you jumped up and grabbed a ledge, like it took you a second to climb up and get to your feet. And if somebody was coming at you with a sword, well, you were fucked. Yeah. Uh, you need to time that better. Like it just made it more realistic, made it a lot more fun. Uh, there was no such thing as like Mario jumping down ten stories. If you did that, you died. <laughs> you would be a pancake. Yeah, it's just it's really really like exciting to see this come around again. So I wonder what they're gonna do to make that new. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's just so much, dude. There's so much great shit coming out on the horizon. But on that note, we will move to. Our question of the bye week, because uh, I think we pretty much went over all the releases and the news. Mm-hmm. Uh, Nick, why don't you give out the voicemail line number? For sure. The phone? phone number, you can catch us at every every time we do a podcast, 610-810-1654. And you can always dial in. Just just dial in and say hello. Or you can dial yeah. in and answer some of the uh, questions of the week that we post on the uh, Facebook page. You can always check us there. Uh, I don't know. If, I don't. Know, I probably can't put the, say the link. It's probably a whole bunch of letters and whatnot. But you know, look up tiny dot cc slash save point. Okay, there you go. Uh, Come over to the save point. Um, and and just again, if you just want to like shoot shit, talk games with us, give us a topic for next week. We'll yeah. roll with it, man. Po- pose, yeah, that's right. Pose a question to us. You know. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. So call into the voicemail line. We have a question of the bye week this week. And this one I th- uh, came from Nick. I thought this was a great question, and we had a lot of people roll with this, and it was so interesting uh, to find out how many people really are like <laughs> And I just thought I was just an extra nice boy. But uh, it- it's interesting when you kind of extrapolate this. Uh, I'm sure there are psychologists that would be really interested in this shit. But uh, the question of the bye week uh was let me scroll down to the thread so i have the save point responses um when you play through an rpg for the first time do you play your character as evil good or neutral or as nick said good bad or ugly <laughs> and damn uh, neutrals those filthy neutrals <laughs> um, great question by the way this was a fun one to really think about um and let's cruise on over to the save point and let's check out some of the responses there first. Uh, Nick, do you want to take the first one? If I had it up. How about that? <laughs> All right, I'll take the first one and then hopefully you'll be ready for the second one. <laughs> um, Jeremy says, uh, typically play good on the first run through as I feel like most games that are not RPGs are designed with the player character as a protagonist. So that's where my mind naturally goes. Um, yep. Play Wasteland 3. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, and again, like we kind of spoke to it earlier, but yeah, I, I think that's why I'm really enjoying it because I mean, you know, not that, you know, previous games got it wrong necessarily, but it does, you know, at some points it does feel like, okay, it's like, okay, th- this is the auto good answer. I'm, I'm, you know, I'll be safe with this one. You know, it, again, shepherded in <laughs> yeah, exactly yeah. it's like it's like oh if i press the right trigger uh yeah i'll give the good answer uh but this one's like okay like i know good is in this direction but you know the outcome is kind of like mysterious and sometimes it is good and sometimes it's like okay you, you did good but it, the the actual you know uh repercussions uh have cut you off from something else yeah for sure do you got the thread up I do. Uh, so I'll avoid I'm physically incapable of playing anything but good. It's the only after beating a game that I attempt to run, evil run. And even then, I will you can't go full best. 
<laughs> Renegade run in Mass Effect was beyond worth it, though. Uh, even on my Saint Shepherd runs, I hit some of those triggers. <laughs> I, w- I will say, you know, again, you know, we kind of speak to that, like, you know, yeah, Mass Effect did have some very good interactions when it came to the, like, the, the renegade paragon choices. You know, there's like punching out the reporter. And it always sticks in my mind. It's like, you're an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, that's great. Uh, I'll go to the next one. Adrian said, good. I can't typically bring myself to be evil in games. Uh, LOL, just replayed through Bioshock 1 and 2 again and saved every little sister. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I, I'm i with her on this one, especially because that was the first game that made doing the wrong thing a really tempting choice. Mm-hmm. Because if you remember, I think it was uh, I think it was both games, or maybe it was mainly Bioshock 2 with the little sisters. But it's like you could save them or you could sacrifice them and get more power. And the game was easier. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thing. yeah. It was in both. And yeah. And you had to make that hard decision of like, OK, d- yeah. Do do I, you know, get more power out of this or do I try and save them? And I, I think you still got some power, but again, it wasn't as much. So you were kind of <laughs> yeah, put at a disadvantage. Bad. Yeah. It's like that uh, that vampire game we've talked about with the Spanish flu and you're the doctor. Um. You know the one I'm talking about? Like it's it's called Vampire, where you're the the doctor from 1918, and you come home from the war and you get bit by the vampire, and there's like that whole social circle mechanic where you can feed on people, but then you won't get the quests, but you'll get a shit ton of experience, mm-hmm. or you know them and stuff. Like that was another one that did it really interesting. That made taking that darker step a really tempting choice. But yeah, Bioshock, I think, was one of the first ones where I was really conflicted. Like, well, I I won't suck as much, but I'll still suck. But if I do this, (laughs) (laughs) it was just a cool choice. Uh, Aaron just responded with Lothar. Ogar. Ogar. So somebody was the orcs in Warcraft 1, and I totally understand that. Uh, Luke said good the vast percentage of rpgs i played have pretty severe consequences for playing as anything other than good or have little or no benefits to playing evil i'm just going to reply uh right now while we're recording we're recording right now and nick and i command you to play wasteland 3 <laughs> can you uh, be good in that <laughs> I challenge somebody to be like their version of good in that because it's really fucking hard. Like, there's a lot of choices in that where it seems like the good thing to do, and then you're faced with the repercussions. And it's like, wow, this is what it really feels like to have to make tough choices in a position of power or whatever. Like, you know, there's no clear winner or loser sometimes. Yeah, I'd uh, say like it, it almost feels again. I haven't fin- fully finished the game yet, but I feel like you yeah. know the only disadvantage was is, is if you go full murder hobo, like you know you just yeah. start killing absolutely everyone. Like that would be the supreme disadvantage. Like yeah, I mean, almost think like you know chaotic evil. I, I guess you know if you use the D and D terminology, whereas if you try to play you know neutral, uh. I almost feel like so far neutral seems to be the, the, the quote unquote best outcome in terms of consequences for wasteland three. Sure. Yeah. yeah. And then, yeah, kind of, you know, leaning more into evil or even leaning more into good. Yeah. You start running one of those issues of like, okay, like, you know, enough people are going to hate you or, and, or you're just gonna, you know, you're gonna be locked out of this thing or that thing or whatever. And yeah, and, and by going both sides, you're going to be locked out of things on both sides. That's, that's true. Yeah, yeah. Like, you know, like neutral is not, a, you know, is is certainly not a optimal way to go either. Like, you know, like you, you can, it's a lot of cre- tread carefully uh, as a neutral. But yeah, if you go true neutral and like try to play both sides, like no, they'll they'll both disown you. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's brilliantly done, and I haven't seen that. And and we'll get, I'll get into ours before we go to the the voicemail. Um, but because this is a really great segue into that. But for me, the game that really hit home for me with that before the Wasteland games was uh, Planescape Torment, uh, another isometric, mm. um, you know, Wasteland style, Baldur's Gate style game uh, that took place in the D&D Planescape, which was like 
the dimensions there you know heavens hells uh and everything you know kind of focuses on the center point in the plains which is a city called sigil and it's uh it's like where all alignments come together and shape the world around them. And that game actually had, if you, like, every dial, like, it wasn't even a game that had a lot of combat. There wasn't much combat in Planescape at all. Um, where it really played out was if you had, you know, decent wisdom, intelligence, or charisma scores, was the dialogue and the stuff you could unlock and do just through talking. And based on how you handled other characters or talked to other people, your alignment would shift. Your alignment was not set at the beginning of the game because you're basically the reincarnation of somebody called the nameless one. And every time you like die, die, like you'll die in a major way, you come back, but you've lost your memory. And so Mm -hmm. this has happened to him multiple times. And in order to like help himself regain his memory in each lifetime, he's got like tattoos all over his body and clues to point him, you know, to who he was and what he did and characters that'll be able to help him. Some of his character friends are, you know, of the D and D races that live hundreds and hundreds of years. And the game really rewarded you with a fantastic ending if you played as a neutral. But that, to me, was the first game that did it. And if you talk to Planescape Torment fans, a lot of them will tell you the good ending kind of sucked. Like, if you played <laughs> that as the good guy, the ending was kind of shit. And it was like, if you play D&D sessions in the Planescape setting, it makes sense. Because, like, the planes were all about like the balance between good and evil. And it just had a brilliant way of kind of coaxing you into that. And I hadn't found a game that really did that for me in a similar experience until Wasteland 3. Well, Wasteland 2, I got to give that some credit because that one hits you off with a major choice right off the bat. Like As soon as you get through the tutorial section and you get out of the starter area and you get in your you know, car or whatever the hell it was called in that one. Uh, this one's the Kodiak and it's a giant fucking snowplow. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. Um, but when you left uh, the Citadel, and you start going out into the waste, you get a distress call. And it's initially for um, a town that's under attack by bandits that supply the local areas, including your citadel, with water, which this takes place in a desert, kind of important. And as you start going towards there, your radio goes off again. And in the complete opposite direction is a farm where they've been experimenting uh, with genetics to grow bigger crops so that because they provide all the food for the local area. And the um, and you basically can only save one of them. And that is wasteland in a nutshell. Like both are incredibly important. Who do you save? And <laughs> that was wasteland too. Wasteland 3 looks at you and goes, oh, yeah? <laughs> Wait to see this shit. Hold my beer. Um, and, yeah, I mean, that's the kind of game it is. And just going back to that, it's, it's why I think it's a <clears throat> complete masterpiece. Um, before we go to the phones, Nick, what was your answer for that one? So, uh, like everyone else, I end up going through uh, as a good playthrough the first time as well. Uh, you know, partially it's just, it's just like, you know, I always try to be like the good hero and whatnot. But then, you know, kind of secondarily, it's like, yeah, usually you'll have better outcomes there. Plus, it also it helps me kind of set up it's like, OK, now I know where these interaction points are and and kind of know the game. Now that if I go bad and I have like a worse outcome, like I, I'll know like how to you know, kind of pace my equipment or whatever along the way as well. So it kind of serves that dual purpose. Yeah, it's it's just awesome. <laughs> I love that games are really tackling this, especially in like the Wasteland style. Yeah, yeah, I think it's great. I've, I've always been like you, man, just my own, like until Planescape, I've always really tried to do the good choice. But Planescape was the first game where it was like, I don't know which one's the right one, but this seems okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, Wasteland 3, I, I, I've given up about, 
I'd say I'm 10 hours into it now. And I'm just like, what would my character do? Because if I play this like me, this fucking Colorado is going to look really good. <laughs> um, and so I've been trying to stick to like the visions I have for each of uh, the characters, the starting two characters, and that's been a lot of fun. And it surprised me in a lot of ways. Choices that I thought would end rather badly have ended really cool. So it was like, oh, wow, I'm glad I took that leap. And I'm just going to roll with this. Like, I haven't saved scummed it at all. Like, I'm just, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. whatever happens, I'm just rolling with it. And I can't wait to see where that story goes. So good shit. Now, I will add that, you know, like, it depends on the complexity of the RPG, too. So something like Fallout or Wasteland, where you can you can basically make like a super genius or an idiot, you know, type of thing. I end up doing that yeah. on the second or third play sometimes, like, you know, complete, you know, like super intelligent or like the fun was the idiot play. Yeah. Like never went your knights did that great. If you made a character <laughs> with like low charisma or intelligence to be like, Oh, welcome to our fair town. Well, what are you called? Me. So, and so. Yeah, exactly. Like, I love that. We're just like, it's like, okay, play into the humor. I love it. Let's roll with it. You ugly, I smack you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, we have one voicemail. Uh, based on the length of the call and the ending transcription, it's our Uncle Fred. I can't wait. To, it's not really our uncle. I just call him that because we love him. <laughs> uh, let's see what Mr. Fred French has to say on the question of playing through as good, bad, or filthy neutral. Can you hear this? What's now? going on? Yep. Everybody, <laughs> everybody on the dance floor. Is that Queen or Vanilla Ice? I can never figure out. <laughs> Those MC Hammer. Oh, huh? what's, new? what's new? What's new? It's been a while since I talked to you. Hey, I'm rhyming. Huh? <laughs> I'm on. I'm on. I'm on. I'm on. I'm on fire. Yeah. Yeah. What's going on, guys? How are you doing? Good. How's the world treating you? Yeah, if you ignore the news and yeah, better now that you're here, Fred. <laughs> you stay off social media. The world's great, it's great, isn't it? Oh, he's right. I gotta stay off social media. Bars and lemon drops and everything else like that. And then you step into reality and you get covered over the head of a baseball bat. And I'm like, why are you so happy? I, I don't know. Uh, sorry about that. <laughs> All right, let's stop. Anyway, let's move on. Let's not get down. We have to keep ourselves. Motivated. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, start of NFL weekend, isn't it? Yeah, I don't want to fucking talk about it. The Eagles game lost. Game. The <laughs> I saw yeah. that. Hail to the Chiefs, man! They're the Super Bowl champs, and they they showed up. Did they not? Yes, they did. Woo-hoo. All right, let's move on. To the yeah. Push to the bar. <laughs> so. What food do I like to put mustard on the most? That is a great question, Al. I can't believe <laughs> <laughs> that's so, a spice of mustard. Oh, sorry, that's the wrong podcast. For what? Anyway. Oh, yeah. oh, oh yeah. turn the page. Yeah. Okay. Okay, yeah, okay. Good or evil with the RPGs? Here we go. You know, I was always good. I don't know. I always went good because I just thought that's what the game wanted me to be, good. Mm-hmm. Then I started seeing other people saying, well, you can be bad, and, you know, this, that. So I, I started messing with being bad, and uh, I don't know. Nobody likes showing your bad. Go into a town, people run away. They, they, they did one of two things. They either run away from you like that and close everything up. They're like, we're deserted. No one's here. Goodbye. Or they come after you like you're the worst thing ever on the face of the earth. <laughs> Makes the game just way too hard for old Fred, so I'm good. Because <laughs> then when I go to town, people are like, cheer for me. Here comes the hero. What up, the welcome man? Start up the beast. Take care of this man. Yeah, that's the way to do it. <laughs> All right, I better keep this short because I don't think I get cut off soon. But uh, yeah, I like to roll the good, the good play. Yeah. Anyway, guys, have a good week. Two weeks, whatever. Stay safe. Be good. Enjoy that football. Until <laughs> next time. A real church in red. <laughs> yeah. Oh, bless you, Fred. You're amazing. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I, I again, we kind of go back to what we were saying. I think a lot of games, especially older games, really pushed you in that vein. And and I think I would say, did you watch High Score? Did you do your homework? No, I, I, I've still yet to see it. You son of a bitch. I know, I know. Uh, <laughs> but they do a great um, highlight in the third episode on PC games 
and they interview Roberta and Ken Williams, which is amazing. They're the founders of Sierra, which, you know, Nick and I have talked about many times. You saw a game with the Sierra online logo on it. You just mm-hmm. bought it. She knew it'd be good. Um, they also interviewed Richard and they had a great interview with Richard Garriott. And like I, I said in the last episode, I just want to go play D and D in his house and let him DM and just, I, I, I would be a kid in a candy store, but he, um, he really changed the landscape with Ultima four quest of the avatar. If I really wanted to point back to a single game that I think started the trend of encouraging you to play good It was Quest of the Avatar because every role playing game up to that point, you could literally like go into a town. If you had the right equipment, you could kill the shopkeeper and then you could steal the best equipment and the town wouldn't say nothing. They'd be like, oh, hi, how are you? (laughs) That's a shame about that other guy. Uh, But you could literally just play as a complete bag of shit and like steal stuff from everybody's house. And you were almost expected to like if you wanted to win and you wanted to level up quickly and you wanted to win the game, the quickest way to go about it was to go through town and fucking kill everybody and or, you know, kill the shopkeepers or steal from the shops. And basically you weren't necessarily role playing. You were just doing what you know you had to do to win. And when Richard and Origin made Quest of the Avatar, it was really <clears throat> kind of a, a a big shift in games where that if you did that, you actually wouldn't be able to finish the game. You couldn't complete the Quest of the Virtues because you will have violated, whether it was compassion or justice or honor, you would have violated one of those to the point where you couldn't complete you know, the ritual for it. So it was a game that really encouraged you to live by the main virtues, you know, in, in Richard's world, the, the virtues that they in, in Britannia held, held dear. And I think a lot of games after that really kind of not cribbed on that formula, but saw the value to it. And I think it's why you've seen a lot of games, even up to today where, you're rewarded for playing the good character, but if you want to try playing the evil character, it's not that it's just made harder for you. It's just that there's, it's not worth the effort. Like the outcome is like, Oh yeah, I guess that sucks, but it's not like, um, I don't know. Like you're discouraged from playing it in some way, shape or form. And again, I, I go back to, um, Planescape, you could actually, that was a, a decent ending if you went the evil route. It was actually kind of cool. Um, but at Wasteland 2, Wasteland 3 even, definitely seems to me like it could take some really cool, interesting turns if you were playing that story as an asshole. And they, based on what I've seen so far, I'm sure in Exile would make it a really interesting choice and an interesting way to play. But I think the reason many of us feel so inclined to play good is because so many games saw the value of encouraging that and from a story perspective um since i'd say quest of the avatar i don't know what do you think i mean i i I never played quest of the avatar myself but i mean yeah i agree you know it's like it makes sense yeah, I mean, you played the older the games before that, like the old school RPGs, where it was just you went through a cave and slaughtered shit. Oh yeah, uh, because <laughs> yeah, it's just like okay, yeah, that's just what you do, and you come out the good side. Yeah, <laughs> bang bang, you're dead now. Bang, <laughs> exactly. Um, but yeah, it's just um, it was a fun question, man. Thank you for uh, throwing that one up there. It was kind of cool to really think about that and let that stew. I, I was actually surprised. I was expecting like so, someone to go, you know, uh, you know, negative route or at least you know, kind of maybe middle of the road. But uh, it's actually surprised me that most people do a good playthrough first. Well, let's 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 be honest. You weren't expecting everybody to. You were expecting Luke to, and so was <laughs> I. <laughs> I saw his response, and I'm like. I literally remember him here dating myself. I see queuing me going, fuck this game. I'm trying to play it as evil. And I think I broke it. <laughs> <laughs> I forget what game it was. Probably a Baldur's Gate game, <laughs> but Oh God. No, man, it was a great question. And I have to agree. It was, 
you know, in these weird times, it was just cool to see so many people going, yeah, I, I, I just, even when I have the choice not to, I want to do the right thing. <laughs> um, yeah, the choice not to without any real life consequences. We'll say that. <laughs> but that will bring us to the end of the show and to the end of uh, episode 64. Um, I want to take a moment, uh, conclusions, final thoughts, shout outs, uh, and obviously give a big shout out to the listeners. Uh, and everybody that continues to spread the word, we love you all. Thank you for showing up. Thank you, people like Fred and and, and the people. You know, anybody wants to call in, like we really love that. It just adds to the show. It makes it more fun. Gives us, you know, a chance to get to know you all a little better. Uh, if you enjoy the show, all we ask is please leave us a rating on iTunes. That really helps us out a lot uh, and helps get us out there, you know, even more. And if you do that, please, you know, uh, we just let us know. I'll even give you a shout out. Like that's just very much appreciated. Uh, I want to give what will now be my final shout out, uh, to the everyday gamers. Uh, they, I, I think we mentioned last show, they did their final show. Uh, they gave us a whole lot of love. Um, specifically, uh, Chris, uh, Holy headshot. One of the, uh, uh the, uh, like OG co-hosts on there. Uh, he's been a good pal of mine. Uh, ever since I started listening to them, him and I have, have stoked up a friendship and we talk a lot back and forth. And uh, I always appreciated his support and encouragement with what we were doing. He's always been a fan of ours and mutual. Of course, I was a big fan of everyday gamers. Uh, I'm always sad to see, you know, any show hang up the mics, but you know, life is life and we all got to go do our own things. But I did want to give the everyday gamers just one last shout out. Um, you know, Eric, me, uh, Chris, Jason, and, um, oh shit, I feel horrible. One of the, the newer folks, and he was so great. He always used to do this, this segment, what would Carolyn do, which was his wife. And like when they'd be playing PUBG and stuff and his stories, he would tell like the games he'd play with her. And I'm so sorry for forgetting your name, but that was some of the hardest I've ever laughed. Like I just thought it was genius, but they were a great show. I'm sorry to see them go everyday gamers. I love y'all. Um, I'm officially doing a strike through on our show notes. You have been here since the very beginning of this show. We've been shouting them out and uh, that will officially be the final one. We'll let them, you know, have the Viking funeral. I'll shoot a flaming arrow towards the raft and thank them for everything. They were amazing. Um, and then to the folks still kicking, uh, the boys at the Bad Fodder Figures who are about to kick off and, and do their show live on Twitch right now. Um, love those guys. I've been a, a friend of, you know, a pal of most of them for a while now. I uh, listen to them every week. They're hilarious. Uh, the live element, I've said a few times, they, they stream on Twitch um, Sunday nights at 9. It, they're hysterical. Uh, check them out. And very knowledgeable on games. They always have a great take on what's going on in the gaming world. Um, and Captain Mike, the host, and Matt, like Eric, all those guys. They just tell it like it is, man. They don't sugarcoat it, and they just they put their shit out there whether you like it or not. And I love it. Uh, it's a great show. I've been listening for years at this point now. Uh, shout out to Gabe and company at Married to the Games. I love those guys. If you're looking for a family-friendly uh, gaming show with people that don't curse as much as I do um, and also family-oriented, check them out. Uh, but they're great. Also, just great people, great gamers uh, in general. Check out Danny Luce and the crowds over at Tap the Craft if you're into microbrew beer. Uh, they do some great stuff over there. Uh, and just if you've ever wanted to learn about microbrew beer or find a new beer to go out and get and, and try, uh, they're, they're a great source to just find new stuff. And that will be that as far as us. If you want to chat with me and Nick, um, we are always lurking in the save point. That is our, our book club for games. I'm going to start uh, kind of doing the book club again pretty hardcore. We're going to do a monthly game, and I'd like to theme it around Game Pass games because I feel like that's an affordable way for all of us to get involved. Like If somebody wants to get a, a trial on Game Pass or something, you can try out all these amazing games that Nick and I have been talking about. And um, I think... We might have to 
I'd say since it's on Game Pass, let's make Wasteland 3 the game of the month for September. Sure, I yeah. Think, I think that's a really good one. It's on Game Pass. It's one of the best games i played in a long time, and I would really love to hear everybody's take on it. It's on consoles as well. It's not just on PC Game Pass. You can get it on Xbox uh, as well. It's on the Game Pass there, and, and I have it on there as well. It's a great, uh, great port. I haven't had any problems with that either, so check it out. You want to email us? We're the retro rents at gmail.com. We are on Twitter at the retro rents. I am at retro rents. Al Nick is at black Eagle ops. And on Twitch, uh, I don't normally stream, but I am going to be doing the extra life marathon this year. The game day marathon. Nice. Uh, I will. Yeah. I'll have some more details. I was talking about it with my wife and, um, I'll be giving more details as we get closer. Uh, I'm sh- probably going to start early again, like I did last year. Probably, you know, go to bed early, get up around 3 a.m. and and uh, do the 24 hours that way. Uh, which means my kids, I'm sure, will be joining around lunchtime to play Lego games and hopefully not shout profanities. I'm really <laughs> trying to work on that. And uh, but yeah, they'll uh, make an appearance too. They're always fun to watch. And uh, but yeah, I'm looking forward to raising some money for the kids and. Um, you know, just doing my part that uh, as part of the Good for Gaming uh, Mason's Little Warriors charity team, uh, I don't shout them out enough, and I really should. They're doing such amazing, amazing uh, work in raising money for St. Jude's Hospitals and uh, for the Children's Hospital Network. Sorry, not just St. Jude's, but the Children's Hospital Network. And and just charities in general, they 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 have gotten involved in in several different charities, everything from like mental health to you name it. Uh, Dave Robopig, that the head of Good for Gaming, has just done an incredible amount to bring an amazing community of people together at Good for Gaming, and these are people that just genuinely care uh, and want to help and have raised crazy amounts of money. Uh, for really good causes. So if you're into that and you stream and you want to help out, check out Good for Gaming. They're an amazing bunch of people. It's a great community, and and I've met some really great people there that I consider friends, and um, I just I admire everything they do. So check them out. It's getting to be around that time of year, and uh, we're we're raising money uh, on Extra Life as Mason's Little Warriors uh, in memory of Mason Sims. Um, uh, and it's just it's it's going to be another great year for for charity with that with those guys so check them out and that i think is that we've covered all the shout outs and where you can reach us nick what are you promoting this week what are what you had a tournament tonight what was this about oh uh yeah so doing uh, the world of warship tournaments again uh so we, we went uh, three and two and we're into the next group placements uh for next Ooh. week so make, making progress so i'm very, really proud of my team tonight sandbar cruise lines we find the finest sandbars to beat ourselves upon that's amazing <laughs> <laughs> oh that's great well good luck man i mean i've, I've watched you play that game and I, I consider myself shitty to decent uh, you're amazing. Like I watch you and your team play, and it's like I hope I never. Run. <laughs> <laughs> so good luck, man! I can't wait to see uh, how y'all how y'all end up. I'll have to keep an eye out on your Twitter stream. Sure. And uh, that I think will be that. Thank you all for joining us again for episode sixty four. Um, you know, it, it's just uh, we keep on pushing forward. Let's get through this pandemic. Wear your mask, have fun, play games, and don't be dicks. Peace. <laughs>